right? Mm -hmm. I'm, in my, I'm in my 40s ish is there. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, you go with the things that you grow up with, things you like, but I always stick with things that were more so um, top hits. So, you know, 1950s. Big, big, big box office smashes, you know. Your, uh, so, Steve Frank Cano Sinatra. Your, <laughs> your, <laughs> Treasure the Sierra Madre. I don't know. <laughs> so, he started busting my balls about don't the fact you. that, you know, I'm, I'm hitting these old movies. But I mean, I hit some in the the aughts. Yeah. The, the aughts. aughts. Yeah. Every movie you listed was twenty years oh, old. Oh, how do you refer to two uh, thousands zero through nine? Two thousands. Two thousands. I sit. I sit corrected. All right. All right. Let's try this again. All right. Never. You, you, Submit. We didn't get that recorded. We were we were giving you gold, Jerry. It, it is. It is. It's oh. recording. All right. So. It, Tech Wits live at uh, Baldwin College. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Take two. It's a myth wits. All right. So again, it's dedicated to all things to pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm, as you're about to find out. Um, tonight, my uh, co-host, oh, well, I'm sorry, I'm Peter Bryant, and joining me tonight is my co-host, Mike Kafis. I like cake. My other co-host, Jack Ballard. I do, too. <laughs> and joining us for this episode is uh, author Paul E. Cooley. Hi, I'm Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Nicole Spencer, and uh, you are a what voice artist? Uh, uh, voice? A voice actor, audio savant, um, <laughs> podcaster. <laughs> uh, hot, apparent. What? Really? Okay, thanks. Um, and I have teal hair. Okay. I just burned Paul, just right now. And down on the end is Dave Robison. Hola. And Dave, you are a what? what what, you, what exactly you, does Dave you? do we're anymore? Exactly hurricane. right. That's what Dave is. So are, we, are we having That's dueling right. jobs right now? Uh, I, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no lie. No, I'm a literary alchemist. I, I find story and I celebrate it in any way possible, whether it be in terms of a podcast, like the Roundtable podcast, uh, a board game, uh, uh, a piece of software, all manner of things. Everything is a story, and I intend to find every single one of them at some way, shape, or form by the time I croak. Oh, awesome. Fantastic. All right, so tonight uh, we're doing a show every night this week, or every night at the con, um, and tonight we're going to do one. We, I wrote a short story a number of years ago, uh, and I've, I've tried to get it, tried to get a good recording of it as a live read with a full cast. Uh, tonight, that's not going to happen. <laughs> 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 but we're going to do our damnedest to get through it. We, we did a rehearsal run, and it's a very serious, pulpy story, kind of like a... Uh, you know, like a pulp thriller type of thing. Uh, but it's, um, there's hanging meat and smoked sausages, and this crew took it someplace else, and I'm okay with that. So we're going to... Uh, we took it right. It's we, we, going to be disastrous. We took a right, right turn with it. So uh, I think we're just going to, we're going to head on into this. Uh, just to give you guys, Crazy. just to give you guys a little bit of a heads up. Uh, this is another world. It's a medieval-ish type genre. Uh, it's something that I've, I've come up with. It's my own creation. Um, and uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. But we can get away with these voices we're about to do. Oh, yes. With some of us who can't do a Scottish accent, <laughs> and no matter how hard I tried. Uh, so I decided to do a Baltimorean accent. Right. So that changed so the It's current. a different planet. This happens somewhere else. You don't know. It's a different universe. Right. <laughs> Just saying. And scene one. In the stone cellar of a butcher shop in the port city of Le Mans, four figures sat quietly as they watched a fifth place ba pace back and forth, muttering chaotically under his breath. A tall, thin man, bitten by the ravages of time, walked back and forth, swinging his arms wildly and talking to no one in particular. We are dead. That's it. We are goners. I can't die like this, trapped in a meat cellar. The Red Death. The Red Death, La Mont. How can this be? A big man sitting in the corner stared at the man through the dimly lit area, his shadows dancing wildly about the room as he passed through the flickering light of oil lamps. He shifted his weight and pointed to the man pacing. Shut up, Pepe. You're scaring Renee, and you're annoying the shit out of me. Pepe, who was in the middle of uncorking a flask, stopped pacing and jammed the flask in John's direction, spilling a bit of the amber fluid on the floor. Fuck you, John. And fuck Rene, we are all going to die. Don't you get it? Die. The plague has come to... Pepe's outburst was suddenly cut off when John leapt to his feet. 
He was a portly man, but still maintained much of the muscle he had forged in his many years of fighting. A look of pure hatred upon his face and his big, scarred, meaty fists clenched tight. <laughs> The big man began to take large strides towards Pepe. No, fuck you. I don't talk to, you don't talk to me like that. And you sure as hell don't talk to Renee like that. You don't use that sort of language around a lady. I'll break you in two, you sniveling, dried up old bastard. John barely took three steps before he was intercepted by the man nearly his size. The man stood strong with his hand upon John's chest and looked him square in the eyes. John realized in an instant that this was a very capable man, a fighting man a macho man. <laughs> the type of man, once committed, would see his intentions through. John's eyes narrowed as they shifted several times from the man's steely gaze to his hand upon his chest. The man removed his hand from John's chest and raised it in a submissive gesture. Please let it go. It would only make things worse, yes? We would all face terrible violence soon enough. Let's keep our heads clear and save our energies for what awaits us outside. Keeping his gaze tightly on the big man in front of him, the fighting man continued. Same goes for you, old man. I suggest you calm down and stop riling people up. John's fist and sphincter loosened. His expression <laughs> relaxed, and he took a step back. Yeah, right you are. Right you are. I was just tired of listening to that old jackass, and his pacing makes me crazy. Poor old Renee, she's terrified enough as it is. Sitting on a small bench, hunched over with her face in her hand, Renee list lifted her head. Her big, beautiful eyes red from crying, she looked at the two men. Thank you, John. I'll be fine. I'm just worried about my family. It has spread to the farm. My father is too old and weak to... My brother, he's still in Helion. He's all alone, save for a few helpers. And you don't... And you know they won't stick around. They will want to go to help their families. I have to get out of here to get back to the farm. A thin blonde man stepped from behind a slab of hanging beef. <laughs> My name is Jay Litcott, and I can get us out of here. If we can make it to Dock 6, which is right down this road, there's an airship. I'm the cook, and they'll take all of us out of here. We all have to move soon, though. They won't wait for me forever. John clenched his fists tightly and squinted a face that was almost comical. He then spread his arms out wide and returned his face to a pleading look. Are you all nuts? Why are you so pressed to get out of here? I've got enough meat down here to last for weeks. I just got a fresh barrel of water down there because I was going to make pickles. <laughs> and we got all, the, got all those... Uh, uh, hot. <clears throat> we got... <laughs> and those things are never going to get through that door. And we are no windows down here. Hell, I even have a stove down here. And, uh, you know, for smoking sausages, <laughs> we're as safe as can be. <clears throat> Let's just hold out until they get all control of this out there. Pepe stood up, pointing his flask at John. I agree. Let's stay here. Why the fuck should we chance it out there? Those things will either kill or infect us. I'm good right here. I'm not moving. Pepe looked at the fighting man swinging his flask around. He pointed the business end directly at him. <laughs> what do you say, tough guy? Huh? <laughs> Going out there is stupid, no? Tell these two, we need to hold out here until it is all over. Fat <laughs> <laughs> the fighting man sat down and pulled out his dagger. He picked up a smoked sausage off the table and motioned to John for approval. John waved to him, nodding his head. Go on, help yourself. Uh, we're all in this together now. The man swallowed the sausage and looked at Pepe as if he was about to ask again. And the man spoke. Staying here would be the wisest thing to do. There's no way they can get in. We have all the provisions we'll need for weeks. It's not the most comfortable layout, and it's going to get... Smelly down here, but it's nothing we can't handle. Pepe pointed at the man, but looked around to Rene and the thin blonde man. He jabbed the flask at the man with nearly every word. See, that is what I'm saying. We stay here and stick it out. We'll be fine. <laughs> no need to go out there and risk our lives. The fighting man put another piece of sausage in his mouth. <laughs> 
and pointed his obscenely large dagger at Pepe. (laughs) I said it would be the wisest thing to do. However, we're not going to do that. You see, when the Red Death hits an area as, as severely as what we got going on outside, they don't send in soldiers to kill them off. They don't wait for the infection to die down. And there isn't an army of hospitalers that'll come in curing everybody. John leaned against the support rafter and shot the fighting man a most serious look. Roy, uh, out with it then. What do they do? The man looked back at him with the same serious gaze. They quarantine the area and burn it. Burn it to the ground. It's the only way to stop and contain it. The room fell silent and no one met each other's gaze. Each person digesting this information, processing it, as if it were some sort of complex math problem. Certainly, he was wrong. Or maybe they just didn't hear him right. Perhaps he wasn't saying what they thought he was saying. Because if what he said was what they thought he said, it meant that they were going to have to rush headlong into a horde of those things, or stay behind and be burned to death. It was as if hope had been on a string all this time, and the stranger just yanked it away. Pepe was the first to speak. Well, that's it. We're doomed. Dead. We either become zombie food or we get cooked to a crisp. I say we drink ourselves into unconsciousness and skip all the unpleasant bits. (laughs) Jay looked at Pepe. Uh, They're not zombies. Pepe's head darted back to Jay as if he had hit him with something. Of course they are. That's what they call them, red dead zombies. They are the walking dead and they're going to eat us. Jay shook his head. No, they're not. They are the infected, and they are very much alive. Pepe looked stunned, as if the words were in some strange language. He stood looking at Jay as if he had just grown a third eye, right smack in the middle of his forehead. Rene took up the conversation. What does it mean? The infected? Infected with what? Jay continued. Uh, Some sort of fungus. Rene cocked her head. She now saw the eyeball. Like a mushroom? The fighting man interrupted. Sort of. Only exceptionally deadly. It's called the Red Death because the body gets covered in big red boils. These boils are actually spore pods. You breathe in the spores, you get infected, and you turn into one of those things. Pepe jabbed out his flask, getting some of the nasty contents on Rene. And then you run around eating people. Jay shook his head. No, you dumbass. They don't actually eat anyone. They attack. It's part of the sickness. They become very agitated and aggravated. This causes them to lash out and attack people. Sometimes they bite. And if they are hungry, they sometimes begin eating. However, they rarely eat much. They are so agitated that once their victim stops moving, they generally look for more things to attack. They are attracted by noise and movement. The fighting man nodded his head. Yeah, but the weirdest thing is they don't attack each other. No one knows why this is, but it's thought they might exude some sort of scent that keeps them from attacking one another. Alas, no one knows for sure. Renee held up her hand like she was a little girl in school. So, how do you kill them? The fighting man looked down at his massive dagger. (laughs) Dagger. And then back to Renee. (laughs) Just like you kill anything else. Except you don't want to breathe in any of that red dust they put off. Best thing to use is arrows. Other than that, quarantine them in an area and burn it. Just then, a banging came from the door above. Then more banging. Then screaming, scratching. More banging and moaning. (laughs) The sound was horror personified. Pope... Pope. Pope. (laughs) Pope. The Pope walks in. (laughs) Pepe, nearly hysterical at this point, jumped up and screams. That's it. They found us. We're going to die. We can't get out. We can't stay here. We're dead. Dead. (laughs) John took one step and with an open hand slap dropped Pepe to the floor. He lay there one... (laughs) He lay there, bordering watching the pretty lights and counting a long sleep but managed to hang on. He let out a small moan and then held his hot, red cheek. John just stared at him intently. The unspoken message, shut the fuck up and sit the fuck down. Pepe understood it loud and clear. He got back to his stool, picked up his flask, and took a swig. He went back to rubbing his cheeks. 
Jay stood up and looked around at everyone. Fuck that. I say we open that door and fight our way to the docks. We'll fly right out here above all the madness. He turned to the fighting man, wielding his still-pointing finger like a spear. You look like you can handle yourself, and you're quite well armed. He then turned to John, continuing to wield that weapon of choice. And you, big as a house, tough as nails, you've seen battle. I can tell by your scars. Considering your accent and age, you from Dan Tanner Dundalk. <laughs> <laughs> you probably fought in the war. I'll bet you could beat half of us to death with your bare hands. John ran his hand over a large scar on his arm. Yeah, I fought more than one war in my, state, my day, hon. Don't you worry about me. I'll cut a swath through them like the Reaper himself. Jay continued. Me? I'm a cook. But I've served with pirates and mercenaries for the past 20 years. Believe me, I can handle myself. That only leaves the lady and the drunken old prune. Jay looked Pepe over and thought for a second. He's here to pick up meat for the castle. And he came by himself. But that means that he's stronger than he looks. Only problem with him is that he's a coward. But I'll bet he's more afraid of burning to death than fighting his way to freedom. Especially if he can just follow us. Jay then turned to the lady. Uh, the lady? She's no slouch either. Look at those arms. She's strong, all right. I haven't seen under that dress just yet, but I'll bet she's got some nice meaty thighs to match. And I'll wager a gold talon that she's got an ass you could bounce coins off all day. That ass was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Renee looked up with her mouth wide open and her face turning redder by the second. Stuck in neutral. (laughs) (laughs) You can certainly bounce some coins off of that bottom. (laughs) Hey, I will not have you talking about my body in such a crude manner, you dirty pig. And you can be assured you'll never be seeing anything of my dress ever. Jay smiled and sat down. He knew he could one day run for president. (laughs) (laughs) The remainder of his. Oh dear. It's the best dress. <laughs> oh shit. He picked up the remainder of the sausage like he was picking her up by the pussy. <laughs> and pulled out his script. <laughs> I'm sorry, we were going off. This is a bit of a tangent. I he pulled out his knife and cut off a piece of the sausage. The sausage. <laughs> Renee continued. However, I am quite strong and I don't intend to be cooked alive. Not while I still draw breath. I agree. We need to get out of here, and we need to do it now. Silence fell upon the room, the only sound coming from the door above. The stress was palpable, and you could feel it. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone was deep. (laughs) You like the ad libs? That that. (laughs) That was a necessary ad lib. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I E in there. <laughs> <laughs> but there's in the back row. Yeah, I haven't read this yet. Um, everyone who was deep in thought, they knew what they had to do, but nobody seemed to want to take the lead. Each one of their own thoughts was of the upcoming task. Deep breath. Oh deep breath. God. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. You got this, Jack. John stared at the slab of hanging meat. He thought back over his long. <laughs> His long, long years of life. His youth fighting the king of Astoria seemed almost too far away to be real. With his rebellion has been crushed, he escaped to take up the sword again against another rebellion of sorts. Again, he was on the losing side. However, he was able to salvage his losses and took a deal that gave him the shop that he sat in now. He found happiness here in his final years and now this shit. (laughs) <laughs> Just like every other chapter in his life, disaster. Ah, oh, well, it was time, he thought. He was an old fart now anyway, and between that lump on his side and the past few weeks of coughing up blood every morning, the Reaper was close at hand. Perhaps it was time to go out the way he came in, fighting, but not for his life, but for others. 
Well, maybe not for Pepe or the two strangers. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely Renee and that fat ass. <laughs> She had always been nice to him. Yeah, I thought. <laughs> he was. <laughs> He's gonna get that fine bitch to save <laughs> Stop it! Stop! <clears throat> I'm just reading what's on here. Oh, yeah. Whatever, man. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Renee could only think of her father. Oh God! She had always been daddy. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Go well. <laughs> Ray could, Renee could only think of her father and baseball. <laughs> she had always been daddy's girl, and since her mother had passed away, she took care of him. Sure, she missed out on finding a husband in her prime, but there were more important things in life. Plus, daddy raised her to never count on a man. She was a self reliant woman. Batteries. She would get into that. <laughs> she would get. <laughs> She would get into that airship and convince them to pick her up and take her to father. Yes, I would. She had plenty of money saved up on the farm. And if that wasn't enough, well, she had another prize to offer. <laughs> Excuse me. That is written. Dad, yeah, that's written. I'm sorry. You were looking down. You missed that. I, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. It's all right. It's on camera. <laughs> Holy shit, this is being filmed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wait. It gets really... Uh, um, she had plenty of money saved up on the farm, but if that wasn't enough, well, she knew how... She had another prize to offer. Daddy would never approve, but, she, but he would never need to know. Daddy doesn't need to know. <laughs> Jay was itching to go. <laughs> He'd be creep for that. Uh, sure. The Reddies, as some called them, were scary as fuck, and he'd seen an infestation before. Port Town seemed to be prone to them, and he'd spent most of his life traveling from Port Town to Port Town. Once you got through one of these, you were a seasoned to it all a bit. Well, that was okay. <laughs> Plus, he had been exposed to it all once before. It was a full-on spore pot exploding lung full of the stuff. He got sick, but he beat it, and now he was immune. He wasn't afraid of being infected. He was just scared of being beaten to death by those maniacs. The fighting man was calm. He wasn't worried about shit. <laughs> when the time came, they would rush out and kill as many of those things as necessary. However, he was torn. As a reeve, he was duty-bound to protect citizens. But he was in another country, on a mission of immense importance. He needed to regroup with his people at all costs. He needed to get Jay and himself to that airship. If he had to choose between someone or get to that airship, he wasn't sure what he was going to do. Pepe was numb with fear. He didn't have a coherent thought in his head. Of course, he was half drunk at this point, which probably helped. Had he been sober, he'd been likely to be hysterical right now. All he wanted to do was get behind the protective walls of the castle and crawl into his bed. His plan? Follow these numb nuts out of here and let them do all the nasty fighting and dying. Dock 6 was close. He could walk it in 10 minutes on a normal day. Just stick behind that one soldier, and that's the plan. Fighting man couldn't take it any longer. It was time to get moving. Plus, he broke the silence. <laughs> Got our minds off the appending doom, and we could get him moving. He had one burning question in his mind about the shopkeeper. Where can I get some of that meat? <laughs> All the pieces of a very interesting puzzle had just made themselves apparent. He lifted his head and looked over at John. Meg, sir, huh? You were part of the resistance, yeah? John met the man's gaze. That was the question he had been waiting from him. That he was a guardsman, after all. Hell with it, he thought. This will probably be his last day. May as well give the history books one final chapter on good old John Griff. I was the resistance. John Griff, leader of the bastards. How ye do? John stood up and pointed at the fighting man. I know who you are as well. You're an historian guardsman. I recognize them emblems on your pommel. Do we have a problem here? There was a long pause. <laughs> <laughs> The two men stared intently at one another. The fighting man broke the silence. <clears throat> James Campbell, Blue Guard Elite. No, the war is over and we need all of our energy for the task ahead. Besides, I studied your guerrilla tactics at the academy. I'm a fan. I also like bananas. I would be honored <laughs> to fight alongside you. James looked around at his companions and began sizing up their chances. Hey, you, Cookie. 
All you got is that little pig sticker. That's My all. name is. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I jumped on you. Go ahead. That, that's okay. okay. The tall, thin man grimaced. He knew it wasn't about the size of his pig stick. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jay, and yes, this is all I have. I was out to pick up supplies, not going into battle. My sword is on the banshee. Had I thought I'd be fighting my way through an army of readies, I would have, well, I would have stayed on the ship. Well, you know what I mean. I, uh... James held up his hand, and James held up his hand, and Jay stopped talking. James continued. Now then, what do we have in the way of weapons down here? If we're going to pull this off, we all need to be armed. John walked over to his butchering bench and lifted a horrifying blade, a huge sword-sized cleaver. Well, I'll be taking my trusty cleaver. She's been my weapon of choice since I opened this shop. He swung the massive blade into the table with a loud thunk. He picked up a wood axe and held it in front of him. I use this to chop up wood for my smoker. Renee stood up and reached out. I'll take that. I split wood at the farm. I figure I can handle myself with this quite well. Jay smiled and winked at Renee. He knew that fat bottom girls made the world go round. (laughs) See? Told ya, sexy and tight as a drum. Renee. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have three more panels with this douche. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> Renee took the axe and fa- turned to face Jay with a sneer. She put the tip of the blade precariously close to his face. I am not some sex object for you to drool over. And if you don't shut your mouth, I will shut it for you. Jay leaned back, laughing so hard he fell off the stool he was sitting on. John cleared his throat. Jesus Christ, if we're done clanning around, (laughs) I'll get on with it. I've got a sledgehammer here I use for uh, making bone meal. Pepe reached out. I don't know much about fighting, but I've done plenty of labor. I figure this is the best weapon for me. John looked around the room. Well, that's built it there. I have a fire poker and a shovel, but, uh, you know, that's the best I can do. James pulled out his short sword-sized dagger and handed it to Jay. <laughs> here, this should, oh, nah, this should get the job done. I'll be using my sword. I'll uh, want that back when we get to your ship. That little darling carries the crest of the blue guard and it has seen me through many a tight spot. Jay took the blade and was amazed at the sheer balance and elegance of the weapon. This was crafted by a true master. He had never held one or seen one quite like it. Renee turned to James. What is the blue guard, anyway? James looked at Renee and smiled. A sense of pride seemed to wash over a face that had been, well, up to the moment, stern as steel. The Astorian Guard is an order of elite soldiers that serve the kingdom of Astoria. There are five branches and each has been given a color. The Red Guard are the Knights. They work directly for the nobility. The Purple Guard are the Magi. They handle all matters that deal with the arcane. The Green Guard are the Rangers. They travel to land and help keep the border safe. The White Guard serve the Queen. They are the healers. If this were Astoria, they would be the ones who would, leap, who would lead the forces quarantining the town and burning it. And then there's the Blue Guard. We protect the common man and keep the law. It also means that I'm a highly trained combatant. If there is any chance of making it to that ship, I'll get us there. John cleared his throat and yanked his massive cleaver from the tabletop. <coughs> Bullshit! <laughs> <laughs> Renee looked puzzlingly at John. What? What is bullshit? John sneered at James. Don't ask him. Go on and ask him about the Sixth Order. The guardsman he didn't tell you about. Renee turns to James. What is the Sixth Order? Do you know what he's talking about? James looked at John and nodded his head slowly. John knew what they were talking about. They had wiped out the bastards and captured them. There was no point in denying it. The Black Guard. They don't officially exist, but they are very real. They only answer to the king, and they do his dirty work. Anything that he's done that would be considered dark or dishonorable is done by the Black Guard. They are mainly spies and assassins. The king used them to find, infiltrate, and destroy the bastards. Jay headed towards the stairs. 
Blah, blah, blah. Less yakking and more hacking. Let's get the fuck out of here. James pressed his hands together in front of his mouth and thought for a few seconds. One last thing, Mr. Griff. Do you have any cheesecloth down here? John thought for a second. You know what? Actually, I do. <laughs> I was looking to make some uh, homemade wine the other day, and so I have a roll of cheesecloth right over there on the shelf. James nodded. Tip Good. Farm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck accent that was. <laughs> Good. Cut it into pieces big enough for each of us to wear as masks. We'll need to cover our noses and mouths to keep the spores out. It's not perfect, but it should work. John set to work cutting the mask-sized cloth for everyone. When he finished, he handed them out to each person. All right. <clears throat> I'll take the lead. I'm the biggest here, so uh, I'll probably need to shove our way through now. Ironically, James went to the back of the line. <laughs> I'll take up the rear. Yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say it. I was going to. Take it. <laughs> I'll take up the rear. <laughs> Jay, get in the middle. This will put a fighting man on either side of Pepe and Renee. Plus, you look great in that uniform. <laughs> when we get to the open, head directly to the docks and stop for nothing. If anyone gets pulled from the group, keep moving or else we all die. If you should get separated, don't panic. Stay quiet and keep moving. Work your way back to us. Scene two. John began up the stairs towards the door, towards the moaning, banging, scratching, banging, and moaning. <laughs> the hair on the back of his neck stood upright as he reached for the lock. Pepe was directly behind him. Not by choice, mind you. He was terrified. <laughs> And as he moved up the stairs, his hands began to shake. He felt a warm sensation running down his leg. Great, he thought. I'm going to die having pissed myself. John's hand squeezed the hilt of his dagger so tight that his knuckles went white. He was more anxious than scared. He'd played this game before, although never quite so immersed. He would cut his and hack his way through the horde and make it back to the ship, and no ready was going to stand in his way. Renee was terrified beyond comprehension. She was emotionally numb. She knew what lie ahead, but it was a good plan that she was surrounded by three capable fighters. When it came to it, she would do her part. Clenching the axe handle tight, she prepared for the carnage ahead. James was calm and collected. This is just another battle, and this is just what he did, and a few men did it better. He drew his sword and put his hand on Renee's shoulder. Stay close to me, girl, and always on my left side. Renee looked back at him. What if they come from the left? James smiled. That's why you have an axe. <laughs> A hint of a smile crept across her face, and looking at her hand, she began to speak to herself quietly. That is why I have an axe. John turned the handle and shoved hard on the door. The readies at the door must not have had expected the resistance, or perhaps John was as, really as strong as he looked, because the three presently at the door were sprawling back like children tossed aside by a giant and a run-on sentence. John, <laughs> bu John bust into the scene like a great angry ogre. Another ready rushed him, screaming with hands outreached, and the big man hit him with the cleaver. A red mist filled the air. The head, along with the upper left torso and arm, passed on John's right side, while the rest of the tormented creature's body fell to the left. Come on, you nasty bastards! Is a, that all you got? A second turned towards this threat from the basement and hissed out a plume of red dust. And then Mike jumps on your line, and then, and yeah. then you keep reading. Go ahead. Where the fuck are we? Come on, you nasty bastards. That's all you get. John charged the beast and struck him overhead with the mighty cleaver. The, he the thing's head split in two, and the cleaver continued down through the thing's left elbow and stuck to the floor. As he pulled the cleaver loose, John was beginning to wonder why he hadn't chosen such a fine weapon before. <clears throat> Pepe was forced into the room by Jay, who was anxious to get the fuck moving. He cursed being prematurely cast into the fray. I'm going, I'm going, you don't have to push. Just then, one of the previously hurled readies recovered, jumped to his feet and charged Pepe. Pepe cringed and held his hammer in front of him as if he would strike the creature. Jay shoved him aside and struck the creature in the chest with his massive dagger. He must have, had, he must have hit a spore sack because along with a spray of blood, he was hit with a red plume of dust. Fuck, that shit's nasty. Renee was right behind Jay. Although she had a mask on and his body bla blocked most of the cloud, she instinctively turned away. James shoved her back hard to his left side. Damn it, woman, stay on the left. I need my sword arm clear. 
Just then, James struck the second ready to recover just below the knee. The thing dropped to its face, and James' sword returned to cleave its skull. The third ready to recover was, in, was a shamble. It had been sick for some time, and the fungus had ravished the poor person's body. It moved with purpose, but was slower compared to the others. It came from the left rear and right at. It came from the left rear and right at Renee's rear. She saw it out of the corner of her eye and was horrified. She was almost completely red. Massive, angry, red spore covered its body. Around the pods grew like mushroom caps. One eye had been replaced by a growth of red mushrooms. Every step the creature took caused several hundred of the spore pods to let out little puffs of deadly mist. Most of the creatures screamed or moaned as they attacked, but this one was eerily silent. Its mouth moved as if to sleep, but only dust came out. The fungus must have devoured his vocal cords long ago. Renee screamed and drove the axe deep into the horrifying thing's head. The cloud of red mist burst from the creature as it hit the floor. Renee's axe came close to the great ease as the head came loose with great ease as the head came apart like a rotted watermelon. The sickening sweet smell of a fresh grave instantly filled the room. Oh, how disgusting. I think I'm going to be sick. James turned to Renee. Renee, come on! Renee looked up to see that the line had thinned out a bit as the others. She pulled herself together and kept up with James as he double-timed it for the door. Out on the street, there were surprisingly few things that moved. Dusk was upon them. Smoke filled the air and a red glow seemed to surround them in all directions. The fires had already begun. The group shot down the streets towards Dock 6. John dispatched several more of the things as the group moved ahead. John halted the group at the intersection of Drake and Adler. James called forward. What's going on? Why have we stopped? John didn't respond, but Jay turned back. It's not good. The street is filled with those things. James met his gaze. All right. Which way do we go? Jay motioned in a submissive manner. Fuck if I know. There really isn't another way. We're just about there. I guess we can move behind the buildings, but we'll need to get past the intersection without being seen. The small band stood for a moment when John spoke up. All right, guys. I've been a great life. I had such a good life. But it's time to go. <coughs> what are you reading? <laughs> that was my question. <laughs> they didn't have to know I screwed up. It just it flowed. Thanks. <laughs> I am a professional. Yes. Professional what? Yeah. <laughs> Hey. Was that savant? I'm an idiot savant, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, Renee we... spoke. <laughs> Leaping on his words? Leaping on his words. Or something. Or something. Right. Or Humping something. his words. Right. No, no, John. You can't. We'll find another way. John held up his hand. New no, girl. I'm old, and I'm fat, and I'm sick, and I'm already about to fall over. I can't run another step. And I haven't much time left in this world anyway. I'd like to go out like a warrior. I'll draw. <laughs> Thanks for separating the lines. Okay. Just... <clears throat> I'll draw in and distract them. The rest of you slip around and go behind and get out of here. Tis a noble death and I shall greet with a smile on my face and a song in my heart. And with that, John turned and began to move towards the mass of horror, his blade held over his shoulder and singing his favorite battle hymn. With sword and honor, we stand heads up high, we courage in our breasts and are about to Ready die. To <laughs> come on, oh, come on here, you nasty fuckers. Are you hungry? Because a John the Bastard is serving up death, and I'm... And I got heaps of it. <laughs> to hand just, out. Just <clears throat> Renee stood staring at John. One hand outreached and tears streaming down her face. James put his hand on Renee's arm and led her towards the rear of the shops. <laughs> of the shops? <laughs> oh, sorry. My bad. Come on, let's go. He won't be able to hold them for long. The others were already in motion. Renee moved with James, but watched as John approached the mass. He pulled off his mask, took a deep breath, and howled a terrifying battle cry. His blade stuck down between the two of them with one blow. He kicked a third off of him, and the thing went sailing through a nearby window. 
He kept them at bay for what seemed like an impossible eternity. The man was a magnificent warrior, and she wondered what it must have been like to see him on the battlefield of, in his prime. Hot just damn. as the <laughs> just as the group passed behind the shops, Renee got the last glimpse that anyone would ever see of the man known as John, the bastard of Nagsar. He was swarmed by scores of these things. He screamed and moaned as they bit his flesh, tore at his skin, and pounded upon his ample frame. No, stop. <laughs> What? He went down under the mast, sword held high like the mast of a sinking ship. Renee wept as James kept a strong arm. Uh, it... Strong hold. Hold on. I need to recompose myself. <laughs> Renee wept as James kept a strong hold on her arm, pulling her along. The group moved swiftly towards the building, dodging debris, rope lines, building supports. The group had to move in a single file, and it was slow going, and they were making good headway. Pepe, sweating and panting, was the first to break the silence. We're going to make it! <laughs> we're going to... Jay put his hand over Pepe's mouth and spoke to him in hushed tones. Shut up! You're going to attract those things to us. Pepe pulled Jay's hand away from his mouth and shot Jay a one-eyed monster. Sneer. Sneer. <laughs> Just then, James motioned for the group to stop and... And he spoke quietly. I hear something. Jay nodded and whispered. I do too. Everyone, move quickly and quietly. We're almost there. The ship could come into view past the next corner. The group moved stealthily ahead, just as promised. The banshee came into view. Jay sighed in relief and took a gasp in the doorway next to him erupted into pieces. A throng of readies bust through from the apartment and into the alleyway. The group was split. Jay and Pepe on one side... Jay and Pepe on one side, James and Renee on the other. Jay sprinted for the ship. He whistled three distinct tones, and a man with a, ba- uh, with a bow looked over. Pepe swung his hammer and struck one of the creatures in the shoulder. This one was so badly infected that the blow all but separated the limb. It hung twisted, shimmering, red and black strands of muscle, tissue, and ligaments. A red cloud of the dusty red goo stuff <laughs> filled the air. The creature fell backwards from the blow and tripped up behind the two men. Pepe dropped the hammer, turned, and ran. He headed directly towards Jay. When he turned back to see if things were still coming, he not only found out that they had gotten to their feet, but they also began coming after him in mad pursuit. Pepe let out a short scream, and he turned to face the direction he was running and just in time to see the corner of the building. Pepe had been knocked out for several times in his life, the worst being the horse hoof that left the big scar on his head. That was really bad. (laughs) But this would have been a close second uh, had he woken up with a broken nose and a lost tooth. But these three creatures, this would have been really bad. At least his death was going to be quick and painless. James fought like mad. Come on, girl. We're almost through. I'll take out these last two and... (laughs) Jay let... uh, Renee let out a scream and James felt her felt her lose from his grasp. He turned to see her being pulled away by a group that had come up from the rear. They lifted her above them and tore at her angrily and jerked her around like a rag doll. One of the creatures bit off two of her fingers (laughs) and tore another loose a handful of hair. Renee screamed bloody murder murder as the pain seared through her body. Bloody murder! (laughs) (laughs) The air was thick with that red stuff we talked about earlier. What color was it? Huh? Help me, James. What color was it? Red. Oh. Help me, James. Help! They James. took out my hair! <laughs> they took out my fingers! <laughs> I was going to use those later! Oh, Raising? Your finger. <laughs> James waded into the mass, hacking and slashing. The infected fell quickly as they swarmed in, and then Renee went down into the mass. They struck and tore at her with relentless, unbridled anger. James knew it was over. He'd never be able to get to her in time. And even if he did, with those injuries he'd, she had already sustained, she would never make it back to the climb. He, he had to figure another way out. Carrying a badly injured woman, he had to choose, and he had to choose right now, to risk all to protect the citizen or continue his mission. He growled in frustration, turned away, and sprinted for the banshee. His decision, <laughs> His decision would forever haunt him. He arrived and had to leap to grab the ladder. They had already begun to pull it up. As he ascended to the airship, guilt clutched his heart. He knew he would wake for those screams for the rest of his life. James was hauled over the side and stood next to Jay as the ship began to sail above Lamont. 
The affected area was obvious. The city guard had established a fire line. Everything from the line out clear to the water would burn to the ground and the infection would stop here. Agents would have to be sent back to track down any escaped and bring them back for quarantine. Jay looked at James. Well, that was a hell of a thing. James continued to look over the burning city. Tell your captain I'd like to hire passage to Port 10. I need to meet up with the rest of my people. Continued in Tales of the Banshee. Woody Murder! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I I've always wanted Would, to do that. Would you like <laughs> I, I learned that uh, maybe a Baltimore accent isn't the best <laughs> accent for a really gruff, riff, rippy... No. 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 Really? No. No. What, was your first, what was your first clue? Um... As to there were several. There were several. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes were made. Yeah. Right. So that's uh, that's Curse the Red Death. I actually wrote the second story for that. Uh, we're, thankfully, we're not going to perform that one. Uh, <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> so, uh, but there is a continuation to this, and it turns into it gets away from the horror aspect and goes on to more of a kind of yes. a gangster type story. <laughs> it goes into a what? Yes. Dicks. <laughs> More dicks. Full on dicks. Right. It's full, it goes into a complete porno. It goes from the soft to the <laughs> Right. No, they go back to the meat uh, cellar, which right. is actually code. Right. <laughs> and uh, he pulls out his massive dagger. Yes, and, uh, massive daggers. Right. right. <laughs> so, so to be clear, the, the meat cellar was actually a male strip club, right? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Uh, called the meat cellar. Right. <laughs> yes. Is that, is that with cellar with a C or an S? Oh, <laughs> oh. Okay, I, I like what you're doing with that. If it's an S, it's also a brothel. Right. Yeah. He's just trying to get a writing credit. Right. Don't let it, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> On the outside sign, it said Starring Cooley. <laughs> That's not for public consumption. So in, his, in his fuzzy, sticky <laughs> slippers. <laughs> why, why was the, the sausage. <laughs> yes. So why were the, why were... More than half of the people named with J names. Half the people. Oh, okay. So to so make up the reading as much as possible, we Lazy wanted all the names to rhyme. James, right, so was, J, so now, and John. There's actually okay. So there's actually a good reason for all this. So back when I originally wrote this, um, I, I I wrote this story and I named the characters after people that I was going to go to a con. I was going to Total Con, mm-hmm. and there were um, a couple of my friends were up there, and I pulled this script out. I told them I was going to do a reading, and I wanted them to come. So as they showed up, I handed them scripts, and they were like, what are, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, no, you're reading with me, right? So they got a cold read. They had no idea it was coming. And I named each one of these characters after one of my friends at the, at the convention. So that's why there's John, James, and Jay. Jay is Jay Libby. James is James Carpio. And John was John Sussenberger. Awesome. So cool. that's why. Oh, I have a question. Yes. Is this the uh, roundtable discussion? Of yeah, the, sure. We can talk about this. Okay. Yeah. We've got a few minutes to kill before the game. I, I noticed throughout the reading here, um, there was a lot of submissive glances and submissive gestures. Yes. Is that some sort of entendre? Or is it no, 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 no. It's, it's more, all right, so you got to remember that, that um, this is sort of a medievalish type world. And when you have um, when you have a guy like James, who's, who's a, he's a, oh, he's a yeah. warrior, he's like a knight, and he's... Um, you know, he's he's the kind of guy you fear. So when he when he steps up in your face, he's the kind of guy that will cut you in two without even thinking about it. So that's why people are like, oh, hold on. That's a the submissive gesture is kind of like easy there, Captain. Um, I was looking for a sexier answer. Oh, okay, that- sorry, <laughs> sorry. And John, why am I shocked? And, and John Griff just looks scary as shit. He's this big, like like kingpin sized dude, and uh, he, and he's supposed to be a Scotsman. So he's supposed to be that. Real deep, roguish. Oh my god! <laughs> We're not sure what the hell that was. <laughs> so go downtown, hon. And again, this is when, where it is. <laughs> when I say Scotsman, there's no, there's no Scotland in this world. It's my analog of that. So it's, yeah. it's, yeah. Anything else? Should All right. Open it up. Does anybody, anybody else want to ask me? Anybody else want to ask any questions? Anybody have any? Because we have a game. We're going to play a game in a second. So, yes. Can you say if you could change your fate, would you in the in the uh, Baltimore. Baltimore on accent? If you could change your fate, would you on? <laughs> would you change your fate on? <laughs> Why, <Don't> Butchie? <laughs> freedom, freedom. <laughs> freedom Scream bloody murder. Bloody murder. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits podcast. 
New episodes go up on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. These are cut from the live show recorded the previous week. You can catch the live show on Twitch Mondays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Jump into the chat room and ask our guests questions. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes at YouTube slash Mythwits. Find us at Mythwits.com and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, and SoundCloud as The Mythwits. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. Please give us a bunch of stars and a review on iTunes. Screenshot that shit, post it to our Facebook page, and I'll personally send you something special. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. If you like us, you're bound to like the other great shows there as well. Check out TSRPN.com. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Make sure to check out Studio187.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next time.